Welcome back, everybody. We are looking at example three in this video on page five. We're just going to confine our discussion here to part A of this problem. It's kind of a longer problem. Let's read this together. So they're telling us that the volume of water in a leaking tank in gallons is given by the function V equals F of T equals 21 over T plus 2, where T is measured in minutes. Okay, and notice that we're also given a graph of that function over here to the right, and that we've got time in minutes on the horizontal axis, and then volume in gallons on the vertical axis. Okay, and what they would like us to do is to calculate and simplify the so-called difference quotient that looks like the expression to the right f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 over h. Some of you may have already had some experience in evaluating this type of an expression. It really plays a central role in a calculus course. Okay, so before we do the calculation, I'd like to see if we can make some graphical sense out of what we're being asked to do here. Okay, so if we first kind of focus on the things that are in the numerator, f of 1 plus h and f of 1, those are output values of our function. So f of 1, for example, we could visually see by finding the number 1 and then just kind of finding the output value that goes with it. So f of 1 would be sitting there on the v-axis. Okay, what about f of 1 plus h? Well, 1 plus h is just a number that's a little bit bigger than 1. So I'm just going to, I don't know for sure where it is. Let's just pick a place for it. Maybe it's there. Okay, and f of 1 plus h would just be the y value, or I'm sorry, the v value that goes with that. Okay, so f of 1 plus h would be about here on our picture. So notice then what we're really doing in the numerator of this expression. We're taking the difference between those two numbers. On our picture, we can see that those are two v values. They're on the v-axis, so you can think of the numerator as being a change in volume. Okay, the amount of water that's leaking out of the tank between those two times. Okay, what about the h in the denominator? Can we see that in our picture? That's really just the distance between 1 and 1 plus h. So that's measuring a change in time between 1 plus h and 1. So notice that this difference quotient that we're being asked to calculate is really just a rate of change. It's a change of volume over a change in time. Okay, let's see if we can actually do the calculation now. Okay, so there's what we want to calculate. And this is really an algebra problem at this point. Okay, so when you see something like f of 1 plus h, for example, remember what that means. That's asking you to take 1 plus h and substitute it in for the, to the t for your function, okay? So f of 1 plus h, to calculate that, we would literally take 1 plus h and substitute it in for the t in our function, and we would get 21 over 1 plus h plus 2. See what we did there? We really just replaced this t with 1 plus h. Okay, and then we'd move on to the f of 1, same idea there, only this time we're going to take the 1 and substitute it in for the t. And so we're going to get 21 over 1 plus 2. Okay, and the denominator of our fraction is just h, so I'm going to rewrite that. And there is the first step towards our calculation here. All right, let's do a little simplifying here. Okay, so that first fraction we can rewrite as 21 over, and then if you look at the denominator, we've got a 1 and a 2 that we can add together. Rewrite that denominator as just h plus 3 if we want to. Okay, and then we come to this fraction, 21 over 1 plus 2, that's 21 over 3, which is 7. Okay, and so we get to there. Okay, now they asked us to simplify our answer, so it would be nice to look at this and, and, and see if there's a way that we can simplify this expression that we're looking at over on the right. We've got kind of a lot of fractions within fractions, so if we could get some things together and simplify, that would be nice. So the first thing we might do is, looking at the numerator here, ask, could we get those two terms together? 
Well, we can if we think about common denominators. So 7 is really a fraction if you think about it as 7 over 1. And to get a common denominator, I'm going to choose to multiply that by h plus 3 over itself. Okay, let me clear away a little space here. So we'll multiply that by h plus 3 over h plus 3. The point of doing that is that we're going to get a common denominator of h plus 3. And we can get away with doing that because if we multiply the top and the bottom of the fraction by the same thing, we haven't changed its value. It's like multiplying by 1. Okay, so we rewrite this. We multiplied 7 over 1. 7 and 1 by h plus 3. Okay, so our new fraction looks like that. Okay, we'll do a little more simplifying here. So maybe take the 7 and distribute it through. I'm looking at the numerator here. So if we distribute the 7 through, we're going to get 7h plus 21. Okay, and in the bottom, h plus 3. Okay, do you see anything that we could do at this point? Okay, notice that now what we have is a common denominator of h plus 3, so we can put those two fractions together in the numerator and rewrite it as 21 minus 7h plus 21 all over the common denominator of h plus 3, and all of that's being divided by h. Okay, and... Let's see, we can do a little more simplifying in the top by taking that minus sign and distributing it through. So 21 minus 7h minus 21 over h plus 3 is all being divided by h. Okay, and then kind of a nice thing happens here. We've got a 21 and a minus 21. Those two are going to cancel out. And that's going to get us down to negative 7h over h plus 3, all over h. Okay, so you can see there's a lot of algebra involved here. Okay, we're doing a lot of simplifying, but hopefully we can work our way down to a nice simplified expression for this. Okay, and now what do we do with this expression that we're looking at? We've got a fraction, negative 7h over h plus 3 over h. Okay, I'd like to, that's a fraction within a fraction. I'd like to simplify that if I can. Okay, and one way that you can simplify something like that is to remember that this h in the denominator is really a fraction in its own right, if you write it as h over 1. So what we're really doing is dividing two fractions here. And when you divide two fractions, that's equivalent to multiplying by the reciprocal. So we're going to take this fraction here and multiply it by 1 over h, which is the reciprocal of h over 1. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, so when you multiply two fractions, you're just going to multiply straight across. And do you see anything else that we can do to simplify that? Okay, I see one other thing we could do. There's, a, there's an h in the top and in the bottom. We can cancel those two h's. And we're going to get negative 7 over h plus 3. Okay, and there, I think we've done about the best that we can. We can't really make it any more simple than that. Okay, and so that should be our simplified difference quotient formula. Okay, and then the next video, we'll see what we can do with that.